because I literally have a ring light, a full little like makeshift ring light situation going on here. Just so not me, but I want to be able to just talk with you very honestly and openly about this. I wrote out some notes, which is also not something I ever do. It's going to be a little bit of a longer video, so I apologize in advance, but cozy up, get comfortable, and get ready to hear the story of my fitness journey. Since we no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. I truly don't know how I've never shared this in its entirety, especially on my YouTube channel. Ironically enough, I've done a full podcast episode on my fitness journey, and I think that is going to go into a lot more detail than this will. So if you're interested in hearing a lot more of like long-winded stories, go ahead and head over to my podcast. Trust me, there is plenty of long-winded stories in this video. But I've thought about making this video for a while, and I just never felt completely right to me because I'm not one of those people that has an incredible transformation story. My fitness journey is something that feels very personal to me because I feel like it's been my biggest insecurity my entire life. Starting from the very beginning, growing up I was so involved in sports when I was a little girl. I mean, I started as a dancer like day one and once my mom laughed at me in the ballet studio, um, I switched over to soccer, <laughs> something a little bit uh, less graceful, which just describes me. <laughs> Just picture me like trying to hurdle, like gracefully. It just doesn't add up. But I was always just active. Like I just enjoyed hanging out with the kids in my neighborhood. I would go to soccer practice every day after school. And then once the end of elementary school came around, I actually decided to go into cheerleading. So I was always just involved in something competitively. I'm not a competitive person and I don't think I've ever been motivated competitively, especially in regards to getting fit, but just having like the backed support of a team and teammates and organized sport was something that I heavily relied on my entire time growing up. I would say cheerleading is a huge part of my fitness journey. I started cheer in the end of fifth grade or sixth grade and I did it almost all the way through junior year of high school. And it was so much fun. Like I have the fondest memories of cheerleading, like just the best of friends, the kindest of people, the most amazing and rewarding sport. Like you work all year long to perform a routine that is only two minutes and 30 seconds long and that's it. Like it's just all in. And of course I didn't realize this at the time because I was just so young and just so in love with the sport, but there were so many things that were so wrong with cheerleading as well that just messed up my mind for years to come. Like I'm still breaking down some of the like traumatic things that they instill in you. Like I can even distinctly remember going to Subway with my mom after a cheer practice, my cheer coach coming in the door as I'm ordering. And then all of a sudden I am petrified that I can't order a sandwich because my cheer coach is going to get mad at me for eating something that wasn't healthy enough. Like just horrible things that no little girl or really anybody should be taught to believe because that is just the farthest thing from the truth. And not to mention I was doing the sport in a very impressionable time in my life. I was around a lot of girls my age that were always thinner than me, always in sports bras. If you didn't look like that or you weren't comfortable wearing a sports bra, it was almost like, huh, well, why not? Are you not working hard enough? Just horrible things that I've since recognized um, totally messed me up for years and years to come. So because of that and a lot of other reasons, I had a really bad experience with a coach in high school and it ultimately made me leave the team. And that was awful. This was my junior year of high school and it was the first time in my life I distinctly remember not being active because I think I was so defiant and so mad at like the years of being pushed and conditioned and everything was so out of my control for so many years when it came to soccer or cheerleading or just any of the sports I did growing up that finally I didn't have to show up to practice. I didn't have to basically listen to anybody when it came to my fitness journey. So I kind of just stopped cold turkey. And that was probably a really bad thing for me because I definitely let myself go. I just I didn't take care of myself. I would eat whatever I wanted. I would just come home from school and just sit around and do nothing. Like it felt like I didn't have a purpose anymore because so much of my identity was just tied into these sports that you're just known for, especially when it comes to high school or something like 
that was all I knew. And that probably carried on for at least a year or so until the summer that I was going to go to college. And this was sort of the time where there was a massive shift on social media towards fitness content. And one of the biggest creators was Kayla It Seems. Kayla It Signs. I'm so sorry. Even years later, I always mix up how to pronounce her last name. And Kayla had released her infamous bikini body guide or the BBG. Now the bikini body guide was taking over the internet. At least it felt that way to me. And I knew that it was one of the only things I wanted to do all summer long to get myself in shape for college. I basically went zero to a hundred on this guide. I went all in every single day doing these workouts. They're 28 minute workouts that you can do literally anywhere, like in your bedroom, on your bed, on the roof, where you can do these workouts anywhere, which makes them so accessible to a large audience. And I put so much pressure on myself to get this guy done. Like it was the only thing that mattered to me. It was the highest priority of my day. It was the first thing I would think about when I would wake up in the morning. And if I skipped my workout, I would just kick myself in the foot all day long, I'd be so mad at myself because it felt like this was the only way I was ever gonna feel happy with myself again, is if I did this bikini body guide. And I don't wanna put so much pressure on this guide and think so negatively of it because truly it was my own negative mindset that caused me to be in the place that I was in. But I definitely don't think that the guide helped me in any way, at least mentally, but I saw some crazy drastic changes and it was in record time, which I think is what made the guide so popular was people would do these guides for 12 weeks long and you'd start seeing progress by week four. Week eight, you were already a different person. Like week 12, new you. And I finally remember at the very end of the summer actually feeling confident for the first time in what felt like years to wear shorts. Like I was so afraid to wear shorts, like just denim shorts. So the guy definitely helped me a lot. I mean, I transformed my body a lot in a short amount of time, which was very miraculous, but not sustainable because once I stopped doing the guide, once I got to college, I was having fun, I was enjoying my life, I was going out to parties, and look who's knocking at my door? The freshman 15. <laughs> I just started to work out sparingly. I worked out when I had time. I worked out when I wanted to, which was pretty much never because it just didn't seem like working out was a big priority of mine. So just as quickly as I lost all of that weight, I gained it back times two. <laughs> and I would say that probably lasted for all of freshman year, like working out just all of a sudden became just like senior year all over again on the back burner, not of an importance to me, but I didn't have any balance. I was just eating crap, drinking too much. Like there was just no moderation. Moving on to sophomore year. This was the year that I pretty much got obsessed, very much invested in the lives of, I'm gonna say like every single Gymshark athlete. I was, um, obsessed in every sense of the word. Nikki Blackadder, Whitney Simmons, Grace Beverly, like those were my role models. And all of them were huge into weightlifting. And I had never explored weightlifting in my entire life. It wasn't that I was intentionally avoiding it, but more so that it was always intimidating to me right before all of these women became very, very popular and so many more, of course, that I'm not mentioning, but there had always been this stigma that once you lift weights, you become bulky, you become big. You're gonna just, you know, I don't know, become a whale, like an actual animal, the whale. Like the stereotypes were so beyond horrible and so untrue. And when all of these women were coming about and saying, hey, that's not accurate. Like you can lift weights, you're gonna feel strong, you're gonna feel confident and your body's gonna respond well to it. It was so empowering. I think it was January 2016 or January 2017, Grace Beverly decided to release her weightlifting guide. And I decided, you know what? I'm going for it. I'm diving head first. I've never picked up a weight in the gym in my entire life. I'm petrified of the weightlifting section, but I'm just going to do it. And guess what? I loved it. I fell head over heels for this guide. I decided to just go all in. I made a promise to myself that I would get up at five or six in the morning every single day before a class. Mind you, this was in the middle of a very 
very cold winter. I would get up at the crack of dawn even before the sun would rise. I would go over to the gym when practically nobody would be in there and I would just experiment. I would finally feel comfortable to just go onto the squat rack and use it for the first time and not feel intimidated or judged or embarrassed that I didn't know what I was doing. A beautiful hack that I would love to suggest once all gyms are open again, of course, go to the gym at the off hours and just take your time. If you're not sure about how to use a machine, ask for help, ask a personal trainer, or just read the instructions. Like they're there for a reason. It's crazy. Essentially because my body was so new to lifting weights, I kind of experienced this weird, very short period phenomenon of being able to gain muscle and lose weight at the exact same time, which because that was my goal in general in regards to my fitness journey made it all the more addicting. It got to a point where I was pretty obsessed. It felt as if I almost had an unhealthy mindset in regards to going to the gym because it became my all or nothing. Like I would prioritize going to the gym over getting sleep, going to the gym over finishing an assignment or hanging out with friends or going to a party. Like going to the gym or working out became the most important thing in my life. And that was something I never wanted to be. Like I never wanted to be that person that wouldn't prioritize their life, like wouldn't prioritize living over going to the gym. But that's exactly the mindset that I was in. I probably wasn't eating enough either. I was buying into all of that crap that's tells you bread isn't good for you or gluten's bad for you, blah, 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 which is just such baloney, no pun intended, food pun. Um, <laughs> naturally, because I was kind of in this all in mentality, it only lasted for a short period of time. And because I was so devoted to going to the gym at 5 a.m. every single day, after a while, I burned out. After I burned out, I think I regressed a lot physically and also mentally because it had taken such a big toll on me. However, I don't think that I would even be where I am now if I didn't have that short period of time where I almost had to take a step back because I was too invested, like fitness was taking over my life and I needed to establish a better relationship, not only with food, going to the gym, but also just my mental health. After that, throughout the rest of my college experience, I kind of just had like a yo-yo pattern of being very invested in a routine and then other times just not caring whatsoever, just prioritizing living my life, but never really finding that balance, that golden balance somewhere in the middle. Don't even get me started on talking about how horrible my nutrition was and how I basically had a protein bar diet. That is a story for another day. I don't wanna make this even longer than it is, but that was bad. <laughs> Hi, I just wanted to add in, I didn't feel like I explained very well why I stopped weightlifting because really that was a big part of my journey and I weightlifted for probably like four years realistically, off and on of course, but in the end I just kind of realized it wasn't what was working for me and I think because it wasn't something that was making me extraordinarily happy, I just kind of gave up on it and maybe if I found something that I absolutely loved or I got back into a program that spoke to me, I would maybe go back into it, but I'm just more focused right now on doing things that I love and finding joy in my workouts. And yes, that does include weights from time to time, but it's not just me solely going to the gym, solely doing squats, solely doing deadlifts, whatever it might be, whereas I was doing that previously for so long and it just never felt like it worked for me the same way that I saw all of my favorite people see success in it online. So last year I graduated from college and I moved from the east side of Washington where I went to school to the west side. And I had never ever lived on my own before. I had never been to this city before. I didn't know that many people. So it was a big change in my life that took a huge toll on me and I think I mean, I can say now confidently in retrospect, I was in a really, really bad place. I had been obviously at a university for four years and you get so stuck in that lifestyle that you almost don't know how to operate outside of it. And not to mention, I was starting a new job. I was working a nine to five desk job in a basement. And as somebody who thrives off of getting sunlight, living in Washington, working in a basement. I would leave my house before the sun would rise and I would get home after the sun would set. It wasn't good. It wasn't healthy. It was absolutely horrible. My mental health went down the drain. And really, I just spent the entire year just feeling bad for myself. I gained a whole lot of weight. 
I didn't take any action to prevent it. I wasn't eating enough during the day. I was never a good cook, so I would never bring myself a lunch. And all night long, I would just end up binge eating because I was so hungry because I wasn't giving myself enough nutrients throughout the day. And then I would get so embarrassed about these late night binges that I would hide them from my boyfriend and I wouldn't even let him know that I was like bringing a bag of pretzels or a bag of chips like into bed with me. It was horrible and just such bad habits that I don't even love repeating because I don't want you to take any of this in some sort of positive way or like get ideas in any way because it wasn't a good thing and I was not in a good state mentally or physically and I just spent the entire year just feeling down on myself. And that was sort of the turning point in my career, even <laughs> career, what am I talking about? In my life, because that was when I decided to start my YouTube channel. I had just stopped putting myself as a priority in my life and I just had always thought, you know what, I'm just always gonna live a desk life. I'm always going to do the things that I don't really wanna do because that's just kind of how life rolls. And I just never given myself the opportunity to follow a passion, to follow a dream, to be creative. And I've actually privated a lot of my initial videos, I think, mainly because they're horrible. Like they're just bad editing, they're not good content, like it's not worth your time watching. But also because I think I was just so sad and I can see it in myself re-watching the videos and it almost like just hurts too much to think about and I don't want to continue to like have that narrative on the internet or just to know that I was in such a dark place and I was just covering it up by filming myself on camera and calling it good or just slapping a band-aid on a broken situation. But I think I do genuinely accredit a lot of the progress that I've made mentally and physically to having this channel because if I hadn't have taken that step of putting myself first, of putting my passion first, my dream of being able to create content for people around the world to view and to connect with and to find joy in, I don't know if I would have ever taken another leap of faith and started another fitness journey because truly it had been on pause for like two and a half years. Flash forward to December 2019, I wanted to do something for me and I wanted to do my first ever mini fitness challenge. And this was actually the first challenge that I ever shared on my channel. It was the first video that I ever did that had any sort of fitness health related content and it kind of sparked the whole rest of where my channel has gone since then. I decided to do the 12 330 treadmill routine, treadmill, treadmill, you know the drill from Lauren Duraldo. And if you're not familiar with it, it is simple as pie. You go on the treadmill, you walk for 30 minutes at an incline of 12 and a speed of three, 12, 3.30. And I thought, you know what? I've always put this pressure on myself to do X amount of workouts a week. This workout guide, because everybody else has seen good results from it. Cue my I've tried every single workout program video. But I've never done a workout or a challenge that I was actually so passionate about myself. I was always doing workouts for other people. I was always trying to look good for other people, but I had never done a challenge that was just for me, like for Taylor, bettering myself, and something that was feasible. It was seamless. Like all I had to do was go walk, I can walk, I can walk on a treadmill for 30 minutes. I'll turn on Love Island, I'll be fine. January 4th, I posted my results for the walking challenge. I talked and talked and talked and talked and talked. That video is so long-winded. I get that comment all the darn time because it is, because it was genuinely like early, early days of my channel and it was so bad. So I apologize if you've ever had to sit through that video. <laughs> long story short, it was a great challenge. You should do it. It's easy. It's feasible. Let's do it together. But Q2020 and the whole rest of this year that has brought on fitness challenge after fitness challenge after fitness challenge. I have tried what feels like every workout program online under the sun. You name it, I've probably done it. And I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing, but I certainly got a lot of variety in my portfolio. <laughs> On a real note though, I tried so many ways, so many different routines, so many different programs to just try and make something work for me. And at the end of the day, I loved doing the programs. I loved seeing the results. I loved documenting it and sharing it and reviewing it and recommending them to you all. But once the program was over, 
So was Taylor. <laughs> the challenge was the best part. And once I don't have that motivating factor in the back of my head, I'm done. Like, I don't know how else to get myself back on the train, but it's so hard for me to stay consistent with something once I've finished it. And also just really quickly, I want to reiterate how incredibly grateful I am for all of the free workout content that came out in 2020, for all of the amazing creators that just took full advantage of the opportunity and provided workouts for free for so many millions of people. I think that is so phenomenal, so selfless, so kind. And it was something that I know saved me and I'm sure it saved so many of you as well. And I just want to be able to extend my sincerest gratitude to every creator who helped in some way get us through those at-home workouts. And I'm just so grateful for them. January to May, I was doing a lot of fitness challenges, especially on my channel. And I think after a while, it just kind of ended up taking a bit of a toll on me. And I felt as if I was just kind of lost. I was feeling unmotivated. It felt like I was just sort of flowing through the motions. I would do a challenge. I'd see some good results or maybe not. I'd review it for you and then I'd move on to the next one. And it didn't feel as if I was doing any of that for me. And I think that is probably my biggest takeaway from my fitness journey thus far. If you're not in it for you, if you're not doing something that is benefiting you specifically, or you're not working out to better yourself, you're trying to look better or feel better for somebody else, it's never going to last. I think a lot of that just demotivation and confusion and just needing a little bit of a mental break kind of brought me to start my 75 hard journey. Now I don't really wanna go into full detail talking about that today because it's a very long winded story. I've already made a full video on it. If you haven't checked that out, you can watch that now. You can watch it after this if you want more information on 75 hard. I've also done at least two or three podcast episodes on it. So lots of information from me. But if you've never heard of the challenge, it's essentially a 75 day I would argue all in challenge where there are certain tasks that you have to do every single day. And if you don't do those tasks every single day, you have to start over from the beginning. And it's very intensive, but the idea behind the program is really to build a lot of mental strength and to really do almost like a rewiring of your discipline in order to make you achieve your goals. I believe the creator says something along the lines of, if you do this program, then you'll be able to do anything in your life, which is, you know, a little bit, it's a, it's a little bit cheesy. It's a little bit of some bologna, but I also feel like I saw a lot of great results specifically mentally from doing that challenge. I think I've had a lot of reflection since completing the program, insert my Instagram post. But in general, I know that doing the program was something that I can be very proud of. And I felt very renewed and refreshed and just sort of inspired to go forward and do things for me that inspired me and promoted my mental health. But I wanted to do that without all of this all or in mentality. I wanted to do it in a way that was sustainable, in a way that provided balance in my life, that wasn't me having to sacrifice my absolute favorite foods in order to see some results that would probably just go away in a short amount of time. And I don't know if I can fully attribute this to 75 hard, but I think the biggest lesson that I've learned from day one back in the ballet studio with my mom laughing at me all the way till now is that balance and moderation and having a healthy mindset is key. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. And I don't know if a lot of that came from 75 hard. I don't know how much of that really inspired me to be in the mindset that I'm in now because it does feel counterintuitive to a program that tells you to not have any cheat days. But the biggest thing I've learned in my 20 some years is that having this healthy lifestyle, having a balanced mindset is the best thing that you can do for yourself. And it's not something that really can be established overnight. And I think I struggle with even putting it into words because it's such an easy concept seamlessly, but it feels so hard in practice because you can always just say, oh yeah, have balance, have moderation, and feel like you're just stuck in some sort of rut. But learning your balance, learning what works for you takes time. 
it's not easy it's always up and down and for me that's just sort of been the narrative of my entire life it's never been a straight line it's always been an uphill battle and I'm sure it will continue to be something that I'm constantly cognizant of my entire life because for me it just it never came that easily and for others it might and to that I say I am beyond jealous of you but for me it's just something that I have to be aware of to make sure that my mindset is kept healthy. I'm living the way that I want to live and enjoying the things I want to enjoy and just finding the balance that I need to live healthily. I feel like I just said the same thing like six different ways when you're trying to reach the word count. My other biggest takeaway is just being able to find joy, finding passion, finding interest in whatever it is that you're doing specifically in the gym. Like I said, for years I was doing workouts that other people wanted me to do or I was doing things that felt like everybody else is doing this, I might as well do it too, or they've seen good results, maybe I'll see good results too, although I don't really wanna do this program and I hate this style of workout. Once I started doing things that I actually liked, not only was I more interested in going to the gym, but it felt like I was already seeing better results because I wanted to prioritize those workouts. I wanted to do those things because they were for me and they were for the betterment of me and my health, and I also enjoyed them. I don't wanna go through my whole life forcing myself to be a runner if I don't like running. Thankfully, I am actually starting to like running, but I would have never thought I would be the first person to say that. Cue my hit single, I hate the treadmill. And if I would have told myself that this is where I would be even three months ago, I would have laughed in your face. Like I've never been a runner, are you kidding me? Nutrition is a whole other story and it's not something I love to touch on far too often because I'm not a dietitian, I'm not a nutritionist. You probably shouldn't take nutritional advice from somebody like me who's just a random girl on the internet. But like always, I just share my experience with you all. Same thing with my fitness journey. I'm not certified, not yet. But when it comes to my nutrition, it has to be the same thing. I have to eat things that make me happy. And for me, that's my pretzels, that's my donuts, that's my ice cream. But at the same time, I want foods that make me feel good. And if I eat donuts every single day, I'm going to be sitting every single day on the toilet. But when I fill my body with good foods that make me feel happy and nourished, then I know that I'm treating my body well, I'm getting in my proper nutrients, I'm giving my body what it's craving, but then I'm also giving my heart what it craves sometimes too, when I want that donut or I want that soft pretzel that's staring me in the face at the shopping mall. If you're somebody that is on your fitness journey and maybe you're in a rut and maybe you're just not sure on what to do next, don't give up. If I would have given up years and years ago, I wouldn't be where I am right now. And it's so much easier to say that when you're in this position, but it's so much harder to recognize that and to keep pushing when you're on the down part of the roller coaster. But know that these things take time. Know that whatever your goals might be, it's not going to happen overnight. Truly, it's taken me years and years and years, an awful long YouTube video to even explain how up and down my fitness journey has been. Like I said, I was really hesitant to make this video because I just don't really have much of a before and after, but I'm really proud of the mindset that I've developed. I'm really proud of the healthy lifestyle that I'm aspiring to live and maintain every single day. And I'm challenging myself to get better and to be better and to live with more balance, more moderation. And I hope that that message somehow resonated with you just a little bit too. If you have any questions about my finished journey, please let me know in the comments down below. I try my hardest to respond to almost every single comment. You can always message me on Instagram. I'm trying my best also to be very, very good about responding to direct messages at Taylor Woods with two L's. If you want more information about my fitness journey or you just want hopefully a good podcast to listen to, you can listen to my podcast, Don't Get It Twisted. Or if you want a part two of this where I dive more into nutrition or specific workouts that I'm doing right now, my workout routine, I'm always updating you on my YouTube channel so you can subscribe down below, turn on the post notification bell. Merry Twistmas, I hope that you've enjoyed. Oh, I didn't even show you my sweater for the day. This is a little cardigan, a little Taylor Swift action. It's a personal fave. I think at this point I've said personal favorite for almost every single one of them, but I just love my sweaters. I love you all so much. Thank you for watching. Merry Twistmas. I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.